Tom, welcome to Senior Flex on X Pathways Division's continuing series of seminars on expansion joints. Today we're going to be talking about unrestrained expansion joints and the special guiding and anchoring requirements uh, for these types of joints. If you've seen the previous seminar on pressure thrust, you might remember that when you put an unrestrained expansion joint into your piping system, the longitudinal pressure thrust is not restrained. This longitudinal force, the design pressure times the diameter of the pipe, has to be restrained by thrust anchors. As a result, uh, it's very unusual to use unrestrained joints in high pressure piping systems. Normally, they're regulated to low pressure, flue gas, or off gas systems. In the example we have here, you see where a high pressure system is being restrained by two thrust anchors that take that longitudinal force. As I mentioned, they're not being used a whole lot, but one of the uh, good uh, examples of how to use it is in very, very long runs. Say a steam distribution line, an LNG loading dock, or a flare, um, uh, flare line application are all places where we can use unrestrained joints because of the long runs and then just stack off the number of joints you might need to absorb the thermal growth. Now there is a special consideration when using multiple joints like that because there's very, very small annular space from the mean diameter of the convolutions to the idea of the pipe will create a longitudinal force. And in this situation, it's a compressive force. So your normal tension load in a pipe is actually converted to a compressive load. And uh, the line needs to be guided for column buckling and uh, squirm. The formula or the application you see here is actually based on Euler's column buckling formulas. And we recommend that the first guide be within four pipe diameters of the expansion joint, the second one within 14 diameters, and then from there on, L max, which is the column buckling formula from Euler. As a result of this need for guiding, and for, to absorb large amounts of axial movement, the industry has developed what's called the externally pressurized expansion joint. In an internally pressurized, I mean, when the pressure's on the ID of the bellows, the bellows wants to increase its volume and squirm, and so they're inherently uh, have problems with stability. However, if you put the pressure on the outside, or OD, as shown in this figure, the bellows actually become more stable and more concentric. So when we go to an externally pressurized bellows, we're not you know, limited by how many cons we can stack off. And so it's not unusual to see externally pressurized expansion joints being designed for 8, 16, or even 32 inches of thermal growth. Okay, also, um, the metal jacketing or pipe surrounding the expansion joint is going to be the low point in your system and so it's an excellent place to put a condensate trap or you know um, steam uh, equipment uh, and then also clean outs for your line it also guarantees that in the event of a failure of the bellows that the media is guided down the pipeline and there can't be a sudden release of, uh, of the media. And so it's a very safe and bulletproof product that we uh, enjoy using and putting into applications with large amounts of axial movement. Here you see a typical application where we would, at the end we would have the thrust block that would take the full pressure thrust, P times A, and then an externally pressurized expansion joint, and then intermediate anchors between the expansion joints. The intermediate anchors are intended to take just or separate the joints so that we know exactly how much movement uh, is going into each expansion joint and they do not need to be designed for the pressure thrust. We generally recommend you do it for the spring force in each expansion joint. And so uh, the diagram on the bottom shows the spacing. Now you'll notice that the first guide has been eliminated and we've immediately gone to 14 times diameter. That's because the externally pressurized joint has guide rings on either end that prevent it from buckling. And so the joint itself is internally self-guiding and will eliminate the requirement for the, uh, the first guide. 
And so you can go to 14 diameters and then L max. So you, we've uh, gone through some of the special requirements for an unrestrained expansion joint. This is a special application designed for long pipe runs. Here again, steam lines or uh, LNG offloading or flare gas lines and generally aren't used in most applications. However, it's a good thing to know and keep. Hope you've enjoyed today's little seminar and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.